assistance needed. What's up guys, Patrick Orfeo, welcome to another Division 2 build video. Today's build video is going to be the Demigod Pestilence build. This is my best solo LMG build. If you guys are looking for the ultimate farming build, this is more or less a solo PvE build. You can use this in a team, it's actually pretty good in a team, but this is meant for high amounts of damage and a lot of survivability. You will never die with this build and you will see huge amounts of ticks from the Pestilence. So let's get into these specializations, then we can go over the pieces and the explanations. So we are going to need to use one specialization now. Normally I tell you you can use whatever you want, which is true, but we need to use Gunner because of the armor on kill and for the LMG. We get a lot of bonuses and buffs that are quite important. But remember, all my builds are templates for you guys to work upon and adjust to suit your own playstyle. Don't forget that. So the reason why Gunner is so nice is because we get 10% armor on kill which is really good because we are going to be stacking that on this build with uh, base uh, weapon damage to give us more of a pestilence tick that's pretty much the ideal uh, the idea of this to be honest you want to be able to fire the pestilence as much as you can there's no point in going full dps in a pestilence build because you have to go and hide and cover every now and again this allows us to constantly be firing without having to worry about going back into cover to get our armor back you can just get the armor back uh, from three npcs without even shooting them it's just great so make sure you utilize this we also get a third reload is 50 percent foster which is really good as well armor kit's not bad on this also we also get 10 percent total ammo capacity every 60 seconds which is nice because you can run out of ammo especially if you're playing solo 
Then we have Rate of Fire, uh, increases by 5% on kill for 5 seconds. So this is just the perfect specialization for armor on kill builds. So make sure you guys utilize this and put LMG damage. Okay, let's go over this build now. So this is, to be honest, uh, what I've come up with. I think it's absolutely perfect the way that it runs, the way that it feels. You never have to worry about dying. Your armor is constantly being refreshed. Now you can say to yourself, well, maybe Bloodsucker on the backpack. That's actually what I used to be using on my backpack talent. But I have gone for Unstoppable Force because it works with the Pestilence. The damage is increased with the Pestilence. And even if... Uh, here's, here's the deal. So I can show this in the firing range and maybe you've seen it from the footage. If I put a couple of bullets into three NPCs and go into cover, okay, I get all of that armor on kill from all three NPCs. I'm stacking damage while I'm in cover and Unstoppable Force is proccing every single time I get a kill and you will pretty much have Unstoppable Force running full the entire time, which is 15% extra damage, which increases... Uh, sorry, no, it's not. It's not. It's not 15% extra damage. It's killing an enemy increases total weapon damage by 5% for 15 whole seconds. That's 5 times 5. That's 25% weapon damage. And this actually does increase the pestilence. So this, it, it's the perfect balance between damage and survivability because we've got all armor on kill. We, are, we cannot be staggered from explosions in cover. We have more armor on kill, 5% from the uh, death grips. We're having all this damage increase, which is 12% from Overwatch and 25% from Unstoppable Force, which is not like Vigilance, which goes away when you get shot. We'll be able to fire consistently at enemies without having to worry about dying because we have got such a huge amount of armor on kill, 330,000, which is more than enough. Let's go over each individual piece now. So we've got 1.1 million armor because you don't want to be too tanky that you're shooting marshmallows. Uh, let's have a look. To be honest, the pestilence tick at full tilt should be at least 650 to 700k damage, to be honest. So we have got 1, 2, 3, 4 reds and 2 blues. I feel like that's a good uh, combination. This was in my Immortal build 2.0, which is, uh, you know, it's doing pretty well, but it is a very solid build. It has a bit more armor on kill than this, but I feel like the pestilence is the great way, and it's a fun way to play with as well. Fun gun to, to play with. So... Plague of the Outcast. Hit supply, debuff, dealing 100% weapon damage over 10 seconds. This stacks up to 50 times. I made a, a video about this. Uh, Intimidate does not proc this weapon. So I see people running Bloodsucker with Intimidate with this weapon. Intimidate does not increase the, band, the, the damage of the debuff from the Pestilence. The damage is only amplified by uh, in, incremental damage values. Uh, amplification works, but you have to always test it. For example, Spotter works, but Intimidate doesn't. So I made a video. I will link it in the description if you guys want the full demonstration on the details of this weapon because people do get confused of how to actually increase the damage. So don't waste your, your talents on it. Then secondary, you can use whatever you want. Just make sure your crit chance is as high as possible. It's going to be a base damage uh, build, so it's not going to be smacking that hard with uh, assault rifles and things like that. But I just have this, which actually does a decent amount of damage. It's nice to just have something with burst fire, uh, so in case you get rushed by an NPC, you can swap and then just do some damage. An SMG will do fine as well. It's completely up to you guys, but it's mainly about the pestilence. So we have got gone for two-piece system Corruption. Why? Because 15% armor on kill is huge. That's 15% plus the death grips, which is 20, and then another 10%, which is 30%, just from the specialization. Uh, so it's it, it's a good amount, to be honest, guys. Um, so let's go over the pieces again. So when you're going for a system corruption, make sure with the pestilence you go for headshot damage. Crit does not make a difference with the pestilence. Do do not make a pestilence build with crit. Unless you really want to go full-on rogue police build or something, I would recommend using headshot damage because that helps the, the buff go higher. It's very, very strong, so make sure you guys do this. Uh, and, and to be honest, you should be aiming for the head because weapon handling, especially if your watch level is high, is quite easy to hit your shots from longer ranges now. So that's why I've gone for more headshot damage because crit is not really ideal. Then the chest piece, very important. Two Petrov. Why? Because we get LMG damage and weapon handling. So we've got almost max out weapon damage crit damage which is unfortunate uh, headshot damage would be perfect but i can't be too fussy weapon handling is amazing with this build weapon handling is really good if you really want to because you do have enough damage with unstoppable force you guys can run a different talent on your chest the one that gives you extra weapon handling braced you can try that if you want it really does make a difference i think it's about 45 percent uh, so overwatch does increase the damage i will showcase this in the base 
as soon as we finish doing this video, uh, well, the build, uh, after staying in cover, you, well, for 10 seconds, you and your allies, uh, total weapon and skill damage. So your entire team gets 12% skill damage and weapon damage, as long as you remain cover to cover. This is perfect uh, in a team and solo because you still get the damage yourself and even if your teammates join you will still be delivering a lot of damage and it does increase the pestilence's ticks so does the soya's knee patch which works perfectly with this build because it also requires you to stand still so these it all works in conjunction with each other in unison so it's really good the synergy is really nice so system corruption holster with weapon handling remember even on pc don't think that because you're on pc you shouldn't put weapon handling it allows you to your reticle of the pestilence to be tiny which means you can put the ticks on from way further range. It's really, really good. And the two-piece system is a must. Then we've got the backpack, which is Providence again. Weapon handling, headshot damage is a perfect bag. Obviously, just not God rolled. Then unstoppable force. Killing an enemy increases total weapon damage by 5% for 15 seconds. Stacks up to 5 times, which is 25% weapon damage, which is amazing. And because the pestilence tick uh, will be going around killing enemies without you even having to shoot them, but before you know it, this will be completely full and you'll be like, whoa, I got the maxed out uh, the stacks, which is amazing. And you, you'll just be getting armor from nowhere. You'll be running around in, in a circle and you'll just be popping armor because of the pestilence debuff spreading to all the NPCs. So it just works great. Death grips, uh, make sure you guys get these. These are God War ones. I haven't even re-rolled these yet. Let me know in the comments what you think I should put in instead of health. I'm thinking of maybe even explosive resistance or weapon handling. I think that might be really nice or maybe even some headshot damage. I'll have to decide upon that one. So yeah, let me know guys. It, it has got 10% health, which isn't too bad if you get poisoned. But, uh, you know, the 5% armor on kill is the reason why we want this. It makes a big difference. Then, Sawyer's knee pads. These do increase the, ba the ticks of the pestilence. Very important. Make sure you guys utilize this. This is increased total weapon damage by 3% every second. You're not moving stacks up to uh, 10 until you start moving all stacks. Last 10 seconds after moving. So, at 30% weapon damage. Uh, when you move after getting the stacks... They still last for 10 seconds, so that's why this is really good, and you cannot be staggered by explosions. So it's very, very important, because you don't want to just be having to move around in cover. I feel like Sawyer's knee pads are one of the best in slot for the game right now. Stats, we're going to go through them. They're not really too show showcasey, to be honest. I'm just going to briskly go through them, but you can see from the footage how effective this this build really is. Uh, with regards to armor on kill, I would say you're going to, you're going to have to have at least... 260 270 K to make this viable because you want to get enough damage uh, Well enough armor back from every kill so I can show you how much that is now, but yeah Actually, let me just quickly go through the rest of it in case you guys were wanting to see it just pause the video So I've opted for using the reviver high because I'm gonna be playing solo most of the time with this and then with the decoy uh, I like to use this because when you throw the decoy the NPCs completely focus on that so you can just literally just put two rounds of your pestilence into them and the entire room will die so that's why it's really really good with the decoy i recommend using it when you're modding it just put a uh, health and duration on it the same with the uh, revive revived armor yeah revived armor repair range and health because when, when you go down sometimes they can actually destroy your hive which is not good so yeah this is the the build let's go over to the range so i can showcase some of the gameplay Okay, so just pay attention here, guys. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to showcase the armor on kill first, and then we can go through how much damage, and and I can give you guys an idea of why it's so important to run these certain pieces. So if you're in cover, you only have to wait a couple seconds, and then you have Overwatch activated and the Sawyer's knee pads. So when you've got zero armor, the best way to do it is to just put a couple of rounds into each NPC like this. Then pay attention. Bop! Armor's coming back. Bop! Armor's back again. There. I'm at full armor pretty much already. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. We are hitting for 830k ticks. Now remember, it's not a full tick. We're going to see now 938, guys. So pay attention. Let's have a look and see how much damage we can get this up to. Might have to move to the other one, but if you guys pay attention, the pestilence tick, look how fast they're dying. It actually stacks and transfers to the next enemy. So with a full tick, we're doing 940k uh, a second. And as you can see, as soon as I move, it's actually going to go away. The damage will go away. So let me quickly showcase it over here. 
So this is going to be a good way of doing it. So unstoppable force is currently active. Uh, we're going to go over here. Like I said, I did explain this in my previous videos, the, the secrets to damage. Uh, but I will do it again here to showcase like the Sawyer's knee pads on the Overwatch. So I'm going to become invulnerable here when I stand still. So the Sawyer's knee pads are going to rise, okay? Overwatch, uh, sorry, Unstoppable Force is active, but Overwatch will not be. So as you guys can see, that's a full pestilence tick. We are ticking for 821. Okay, and as soon as I start moving, look, 821k. As soon as I move, uh, it's going to remove the buff from the Sawyer's knee pads. We've still got Unstoppable Force, remember. It's 821k to 678. So look how it's going up. 678, 726, 741, 757, 773, 789, 805. So it goes up with the Sawyer's knee pads. And as soon as we go into cover... Let's see the max out damage, which should be 938. So that's how you test to make sure that Unstoppable Force or uh, Sawyer's Knee Pads or Overwatch is actually proccing. So let's see how much damage you can get now. So we've got a full tick. 853. It's going up because of Sawyer's. So yeah, as you guys can see over there, it's actually proccing the max damage. So it's, it's just sp it's just spreading across the room, guys. It's just it, it's kept spreading from when I originally shot it. So as you can see, we're doing a huge amount of damage. So it, it's between 880 to 930k. And as soon as uh, uh, Unstoppable Force goes away, look. So Unstoppable Force is now gone. So look at the damage without Unstoppable Force. 752 okay so that's a max tick 752 let's get some kills and let's see how much damage we can do here so it's from 752 look how it's rising 824 that guy's about to die so it's 824 849 so it, there's a big difference so i think it's very important to utilize it the the unstoppable force overwatch and the sawyer's knee pads as you guys can see they all work fine and it, it does increase your damage to so 938k a tick which is great especially considering how much armor we get back so hopefully you guys did enjoy this quick little demonstration explanation uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this build i really do love this this is what i use in my solo play and i'll be seeing everybody in the